Hello and good morning listeners welcome back to Almus Market Mornings your daily dose of global financial updates I'm your host Swaraj Raj Gopal and we have got you covered on everything from currency shifts to pivotal central bank decisions and important speeches plus you'll gain expert analysis on macroeconomic data that's shaping the market narrative right now join us for this episode and navigate the markets with confidence Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell led his colleagues to an outsized interest rate cut yesterday, reducing U.S. interest rates by 50 basis points. The decision wasn't without controversy. Michelle Bauman cast a dissenting vote in favor of a smaller 25 basis cut, marking the first dissent by a Fed governor since 2005. Following the rate cut, the dollar index edged higher. Yen weakened. Uh, U.S. Treasury 10-year yields rose, and Asian stocks, along with the U.S. equity futures, saw gains. Good morning, JK. With this significant trade cut, what are your thoughts on the potential for further cuts this year? Hey, good morning, uh, Raj. Yes, it was uh, one of the most uh, anticipated uh, Fed meeting for a long time, and uh, definitely Fed started its uh, first easing campaign in the last four years by somewhat an outsized uh, cut in the rate by 0.5 percent. However. Uh, I think if you look at the Fed statements, uh, they are clearly saying that the Fed has gained greater confidence in inflation sustainably moving to a two percent, and judge the risk to employment and inflation goals as roughly in balance. Uh, they also said that uh, you know the labor market remained cool and remained attentive to risks on both sides. So what I see from uh, uh, Fed chairman's uh, statements and the Fed statement. Uh, is that uh, the higher thought was more of a preemptive nature to keep the employment sector robust, yeah, I mean, even as there is evidence, uh, uh, sorry, enough confidence that the inflation will remain low. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, chairman said that labor market is in solid condition, and their intention was to, uh, on the decision, was to keep it there. So it's a, clearly an approach is to achieve a soft landing because they also said. Inflation remains, uh, you know, uh, on the lower side. Uh, there has been a lot of data supporting their decision during the blackout period. Uh, there was, uh, you know, job openings were lower, unemployment rate went up, and uh, they have, you know, in fact, he said they would have cut in July if the, if they had seen the data before the meeting. The meeting in July was done on thirty uh, first, and uh, in the employment. Uh, Data uh, came two days later, uh, uh, you know, showing unemployment rate at 4.3 percent. So this means uh, 0.5 percent can be seen as a cumulative action of July and September, and cannot be seen as you know a hefty cut. There is also uh, no preset for uh, path for the rate moves, and uh, and will be as per conditions that evolve. That is what he has said. Uh, he also said that they can go either quicker or slower or pause on rates. Basically, a data dependent approach, which you know makes me feel that uh, once again, market may be more exuberant in expecting you know more than one percent uh, uh, cut for the year or another seventy five basis points cut for this year. But I think Fed will be on a measured path. I don't think they will be. Uh, doing more than uh, half percent, which of course is indicated by the uh, dot plot, but once again that will be dependent on the data. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, you know, should we expect a worse number? There can be definitely more cuts uh, because uh, he has said that downside risk to employment have increased. So overall, I feel uh, it's a very uh, uh, balanced uh, approach. Uh, I, I think it was par for the course as far as the uh, Fed uh, move was concerned. Um, some did argue that, you know, because the recent data was strong and GDP number uh, projection for Q3 is also strong, uh, Fed shouldn't have. But then uh, I think uh, keeping their rates at uh, multi-year highs uh, when the economy is seeing a lower, sorry, uh, worse employment uh, situation, is uh, something that uh, you know they cannot afford. I think they have taken a preemptive action for the em employment situation to be stronger. And at the same time, inflation is not expected to rise. The risks are that you know 
uh, the inflation does uh, go up again after you know another one or two rate cuts and that is something that fed has taken a measured call so overall i think this was a good decision but at the same time for the markets this was a decision that was well discounted uh, most analysts had expected in fact we had pointed out that uh, fed had used one of the voices of former fed member mr uh, mr dudley to indicate to the market that they are on the course to cut 0.5% and that is why the reaction in the market was not uh, anything but volatile uh, we had uh, seen the stock indices go up but then gave up again on profit taking which is very normal these type of moves happen even on a day when there is no significant data or fed rate decision uh, i would say the yields are you uh, know much more seen much more movement yesterday than other markets uh, because they had also fallen much more discounting a deeper rate cuts uh, two year which had seen a low of 3.55 is up nearly at 3.7% and 10 year is also up quite a bit about 3.7% uh, so uh, i think it is a dollar that was being watched uh, quite closely because it had continued to weaken well into the fed meeting and uh, saw a new uh, high for the gold in fact and also for uh, sterling but uh, what was uh, i would say more indicative was uh, the dollar yen which was already you know below 140 a couple of days back did not go uh, even below 140.50 and today it's trading at 143 uh, secondly the euro Uh, where we have seen a string of weak data recently once again to uh, to specifically point out the zero economic sentiment data that came quite a, uh, a weak number for the eurozone as well as germany which is already you know uh, seeing a contraction in gdp and might enter a recession so euro strengthening near 1.12 was a slight surprise and i think uh, that is where uh, in euro indian we have seen a strong uh, uh, retracement uh, uh, to the lower side against the dollar uh, and of course gbp remains strong uh, because uh, as uk central bank meets today for a rate decision the expectations are low for a rate cut and because of the yield difference uk pound can uh, remain uh, you know relatively much stronger but if they do surprise by a rate cut following the fed Uh, i think the uk pound can slump below 1.30 so overall dollar i think is set for some consolidation um, the future moves will depend on data that is coming up in the next uh, you know days and weeks because the fed has very clearly indicated that uh, the, the half percent cut is not the new pace it's not that they are going to cut half percent uh, every meeting going forward once again it will be de- dependent and the dot plot does not mean that it is their plan it is only an indication of members uh, uh, you know members assessment of the rate path uh, uh, coming to rupee i think rupee had uh, better responded to the moves in the global markets uh, so far uh, it has uh, broken the 83.70 level at least in the offshore market uh, 8370 has been holding for uh, quite some time and uh, i think this is also slightly surprising given that you know uh, the india's uh, trade balance for august was almost at uh, 30 billion uh, in uh, you know beating the forecast and also beating the previous month's numbers uh, imports were much higher uh, mainly on account of a record import in gold and silver which happened after the duty cut that was done in uh, uh, in the month of july uh when uh, government presented the budget however uh, this can be seen as a one off uh, increase and can be moderating in the coming months even then however the fall in export performance uh, on a year on year basis uh, is not very encouraging so i think we'll be closely watching the coming upcoming trade figures for india overall uh, i think because uh, the asian currencies and even the chinese one have been strengthening in the recent days uh, uh, the market has tested the bottom of the range for the usd inr in the afro market it has broken but uh, uh, i mean it's it's it will be interesting to see whether the central bank is aligned with this move uh, and uh, allows more strength 
or as they have done in the past, whether they come back and buy the dollar, uh, that is what I would be interested to see. Overall, I think we are uh, done with a very major uh, decision for the markets, uh, and uh, market will be more keen to see the upcoming data from the US uh, for further rates uh, decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob, for that detailed FOMC deep brief. And uh, just quickly summarizing, markets uh, uh, had discounted this decision pretty well. Uh, but now, going forward, what the markets are discounting is uh, sort of a 75 basis point cut this year, uh, while a dot plus indicator total of 50 basis point cut this year. But again, as Jacob mentioned, it's not a done deal. Uh, given the Fed has maintained that they will be data dependent and adjust their pace accordingly, uh, the yields are higher now in the US than they were pre-FOMC. And the event to look out for today would be the UK rate decision. And it is expected that the BOE, BOE will not be cutting rates uh, this meeting. And if they do, it may be a risk for the sterling. Uh, rupee responded better to moves in the offshore market, breaking rupees 83.70. Uh, but one thing to note is that trade deficit was higher due to record input of uh, gold and silver, and which Jacob mentioned may be a temporary factor and a fall in exports. Uh, that's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets.